Good morning, friends. How are you guys today? I am super, super excited to share this amazing woman that I just stumbled across on a challenge, kind of similar to this one. Um, and we just connected on there and she is just a force and this beautiful presence that immediately we just connected. You know, there's some people you're like, hey, I see you. I like you. Um, and, and she really is amazing. She's super cool, an opera singer. Uh, I don't know that I've ever personally met an opera singer, and I think it's amazing. So I'm going to be sharing, I'm going to share one of her songs in this group so you guys can hear her. And, but not only that, what I truly love about her is she's taking her passion which is singing and performance and her voice. And she's teaching um, kids and other people how to use their voice and use breathing and, and just how powerful that is. So I cannot wait for you guys to hear from her. She's originally from France and um, her name is Anna Clay. So Anna, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for being here with us and sharing yourself with us and tell everybody um, what you've been up to, what, what you're doing currently. Thank you so much, Janice. I'm very excited to be with you today. So please forgive my French and I will introduce myself now. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> so like, like you said, I'm an opera singer. I'm a former rocket scientist. I founded a nonprofit, Vocalist, to instill hope and courage into children impacted by trauma. And I'm also a performance, or maybe mainly <laughs> a performance specialist, um, meaning that I reflect and I help others uh, on confidence, how you can build your confidence using your body, so your posture, your breathing, your voice, how you can redirect your stress to make it a positive force versus a destructive one. So basically, how can you thrive in a shape-shifting world? The things I'm working on right now is to deepen this work I'm doing on performance. Um, I'm working on a book on a memoir, self-help memoir, and I'm finishing on another side a book that I've been writing for children, The Journey of the Heart, um, which is a work I initiated already six years and a half ago. I finished this book uh, this summer and is currently being edited by a wonderful writer, wonderful uh, editor, so that I can finally get it published. And it's actually in connection with my nonprofit because my dream is to have this, this uh, story put into music. So we use the power of storytelling, the power of music and the power of, I'm going to say hypnosis. So basically infusing positive messages um, in a story to strengthen uh, the persona. Yeah. Wow. Oh my God. I just got super excited about that. Seriously. That is such an amazing mission. And um, how, how do we use our voices to, how do we, especially if we're really shy or really afraid to even, you know, and we're talking about music and singing, but also just speaking. How do we, if we're really scared to do that, what are some steps that you think are helpful, like baby steps at the very beginning to kind of step into our own power and use our individual voices? Mm -mm. Well, it's a very good point because what's happening with voice is that it reflects who we are on a deeper level we can hear the wounds in a voice we can hear insecurities we can hear if people feel very confident and i i believe a big part of why people are sometimes so afraid to speak is because they're aware that speaking 
maybe makes them feel naked in front of others. And if you listen to a recording of your voice, like, you know, for most people, they're very uncomfortable with the sound of their voice. Because it's like looking at yourself in a mirror. Like, the thing is, you look at yourself in a mirror several times a day for most people, just we get up, we go to the bathroom, whatever, we see the reflection in the windows, you know, uh, so we are very used to our image and even though some people are not comfortable with it, they're used to it. But with the voice, it's very different because you're not used to hear a recording of your voice. So you don't have this time to digest how uh, your voice is reflected into the world. And another, th another thing that I, I believe it's important to stress is that the inner voice and the outer voice are not the same. We hear our voice with our inner ear and people hear it differently. They hear it with uh, the resonance, they hear it with, you know, all the air that makes the, the, the vibration between you and the person who hears you, it's going to change the sound and their own ear is going to receive it differently. So that's something that you may think you have a certain sound into the world because of your inner ear and it's actually different. And then if you have a feedback from a recording, it can be sometimes a shock, very uncomfortable, annoying, and just because the sound is different and a lot because it reflects things that you don't want people to see. You can put makeup on your face, you cannot put makeup on your voice. You have to, if you want to work on it, you have to work on it differently. So um, you ask me what would be a good baby step. I think a baby step is to understand that your voice, like your body, is something that's here, it cannot change. And a baby step would be to start with acceptance. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's actually a big thing, but it's acceptance of the body you received and the voice is a part of your body. And then that's the way you are, what do you do with it? Okay, so you cannot choose the body you receive, but you can choose how you use it or you can choose how you present it to the world. And with the voice, it's the same thing. The way you speak um, is something you can work on. It's something you can magnify, transform. So there is no fate here. Okay, you received something at first, but then you can do something about it. And if you work on yourself, if you feel better about yourself, it's going to be reflected in your voice. And vice versa, if you work on your voice, it's going to change also the way you actually feel about yourself. So these are very interesting um, things that I need I, I, I think one need to think about when they are very introvert. Another thing I'd like to stress is that, is that uh, myself, I was extremely introvert. And opera singing helped me to get out of my shell. And those techniques that, that I actually share with others um, to use your body to breathe, to place your voice, are the ones that actually helped me to become maybe an extrovert. I'm not truly an extrovert, but I'm able to be on a stage and shine. And because you cannot escape who you are, well, you'd better embrace it and shine who you really are because there's only one you in the world. In the whole history of the humanity, there's only one you, there's no one else, not in the past, not in the future, not now, that's like you. No one. So it better embrace it and make it the most positive force you can, you know? So yes, embrace it. Acceptance. Oh my gosh. All, all the things that is, um, at least for me is a continual process in life of, um, accepting, you know, things that we can't change. And then the things that we can change, taking baby steps, you know, to, to change those things, things that are holding us back truly that are just limiting beliefs or fears or things like that. Um, and what would you say as far as breathing, 
because a part of yoga and um, meditation a lot of times has to do with breath work and you know inhaling a certain count and then holding exhaling and there's all different ways of of breath work that are taught and and also that people can experiment with but what would you say are uh, are some helpful tools for people as far as breathing and breath work just in their daily lives maybe to manage stress or to uh, be more in their bodies be more in the present moment what would you say mm -hmm. well there's obviously really a lot that could be say um, that could be said on the matter and breathing and voice it's 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 really um there's a lot to say there's a lot to work on there's a lot to develop and i would like to just start with the origin story when you were born as a baby you knew how to breathe if you watch a baby crying they can cry for many many hours very very loud and they never hurt their vocal cords and when you watch a baby crying all of their body is opening is very free and what happens is that as we grow up we grow in an environment the family the society etc and we take in all these um, criticism expectations etc and our body tends to shrink or close up as a protection and we do lose this freedom in the body and what happens is it's going to affect directly our breathing and i don't know one person in the entire world who actually knows how to breathe as an adult without working on it you know to get back to this origin point it's like you need to relearn you need to relearn how to free your body and the type of work that can be done in yoga etc is nice because it helps you release but most times it's just a part of the problem like you need to really get the the grounding the anchoring this flexibility and strength at the same time and be able to use this power as you walk into the world as you express yourself as you interact with others because there is so much power in breathing and i hear a lot you know how you can use your breathing to relax okay there is so much more to it you can use your breathing your respiratory system is your instrument you can use that to power yourself to find your strength to find your anchor that's where your anchor is so that's the way I see it, you know, I guess because I spent a more, like a lifetime to master my instrument. Um, that's the understanding that I got now and that I want to share with others. Just the same way you can redirect your stress, like stress is not always bad. Stress, sometimes you have to let go, you have to relax. And sometimes stress is a really good thing because it's what makes you perform and be good at something so what you want is redirect well the same way with breathing this flow that you have you can use it to relax but you can also use it to power through you know it's like the ebbs and flows of of the ocean on the sand it's 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 there there's a flow but it's also really strong so and you want to find that in your body so um i think i lost a little bit the initial question can we get back to that ah, <laughs> Let's get back yeah, to it. I think you answered it perfectly it's just yeah. about how to use breath you know yeah. and uh, i love the point that you made though and i had never thought about this or even really heard this about babies that's fascinating to me and it's so true um, that babies can cry for hours and hours. I remember when my son was young and we were doing the whole like, let him cry through the night thing. Oh my gosh. I thought there's no way he could keep crying. I mean, it was like five hours or something, you know, and as a mom, you're just like dying to go in there and grab them. And they're like, no, you have to just let them cry. It'll be fine. But it was shocking to me how long and hard he could cry yeah. <laughs> and that freedom that you're talking about and how 
crazy it is that as we grow up and as negative voices or input or criticisms come in, we, and I resonated with what you said because my posture has until maybe five or so years ago when I had the awareness of it, I mean, it was shoulders down, hunched over as a form of protection and also my insecurity and not being confident. And as I've just, like you were saying, retraining your voice, like adults have to kind of be aware, first of all, and then do the work of retraining. So I thought you answered that amazingly, like as so many insights and, and information that I actually didn't know before. Um, and on this note, have you heard of the, you know, the Superman pose? Where oh, the power pose. The yeah. power pose. What do you think about that? Is that effective? Is that something you've ever uh, used? Well, I actually used it without knowing I was using it. And then I discovered Amy Kearns' work uh, kind of recently, actually, on presence and her TED Talk. I think, you know, a part of it is because um, I was born in another country and discovering American references over time. Um, so, yeah, I heard, of course, about the power pose, which is a, an effective thing, but... And first... But I wonder, if, I wonder, just bounce back on something, you know, it's, it's about, you know, this idea of, of breathing and of baby, and I want to go back on this idea of existing, is that you were born into the world, so suddenly you exist, and then there's one day you realize you exist, and what does it mean into the world that you exist? And that's where you know, about breathing, accepting to breathe because you exist. So as you accept that you exist, you accept this air coming in and this power of yours coming out into the world. You cannot escape yourself. So a better shining, like I'm gonna go back to what I was saying before, but it's really about accepting and embracing that you exist into the world. And what do you do with it? I feel good, feel good about it. That would be the number one thing is like, feel good about existing is <laughs> good. And then figure out the other stuff after. Oh. So <laughs> about the power pose, um, actually is something that is interesting because talk about, you know, posture. What resonates the most with me in this power pose is how you're going to open here in the in the chest and what happens you know i talk about shrinking before and how you know we tend to close ourselves so actually like that and then our chest tends to be closed but what you want to feel better number one <laughs> be seen differently support your voice actually open your chest so all of these your legs you want to keep it open and the chest how you open your chest is also how you open your your heart and if i'd like for you to take one thing today is to open your heart because when you open your chest when you open your heart you're able to give but you're also able to listen and hear better you cannot receive like that you can't and if you're like this you're going to give, you're going to be able to receive. So this opening is very important. It's what allows the movement, it's what allows the flow. Um, and what fascinates me about breathing is that you have all these parallels of life, like, okay, there's like the body, how you feel in your body, how you, how you, you know, you, you, you're fully um, alive in this, um, embodiment of you and then there is the spiritual part is you know like like a, um, i'm gonna go back to that later but how we are one into the world how we are connected to one another through breathing and there is the mindset how you by opening your body you're actually more open to life and opportunities as well so that's where breathing voice etc it all goes together it, it it seems to be a tiny thing for so many people when it's actually so it's our essence our essence goes through breathing and this is also how we receive the essence of others in a way and actually maybe um 
I'd like to share that now is that um, in workshops that I, that I did before I started to share um, that that we are one, the fact that we are all connected to one another, it's not just a spiritual understanding of life. You know, we are separated to one another because we are in, in our body. But as you inhale, you, you inhale the air that was in someone else before. And all the air we breathe, we, we, with all this air, we connect to each other and we cannot escape what makes us a lie connected to one another and that's what's so beautiful about it is how we can co-create create our own body our own cells are uh, recreating every second with a material that was in someone else before so you have that on this physical level and we already like co-create this way we're already alive this way and what's interesting in the world today and um interesting and, and scary for many is with this pandemic happening and there's like all the smokes with the fire people are so afraid to breathe and they put a mask on themselves to filter etc yeah and uh, actually i think we need to embrace our breathing the more we're scared the more we're going to impact this body and close more and in the mindset as well and that even though you know one has to be careful right now we still need to understand this connection we have to one another in a good way because people see it now because there's a problem and maybe that's that's a blessing in disguise actually maybe finally you know, people can understand, yeah, we are connected to one another. We are, and we cannot escape that. So it's better see it in a, in a really good way because it's a wonderful gift. Um, and that's so beautifully stated. I, I love how you phrase that. And also um, breathing, but also opening our hearts. I think, yes, on a physical level, we're connected, but when we open our hearts, then the co-creation is even that much more spectacular with, you know, people, two people maybe co-creating something together, both with open hearts. And um, it's like, what can't we do? You know, how amazing is that? How much power we have just within ourselves, but even more so in creating something with somebody else. So that, that, thank you for sharing that so eloquently and beautifully stated. Um, and unfortunately we're running out of time, but we're gonna, um, I, I just want you to share any, anything that's on your heart, um, about helping, helping those of us and everybody that's in this situation that feels closed off that feels fearful um what what are some things that we can do during this time to focus on the positive and to focus on uh keeping our hearts open and co-creating and doing all the the good and purposeful things in life what are some just maybe thoughts that you have about that or ideas for people um, as we move forward this year? Mm -hmm. I think we have a wonderful opportunity to be part of the world of tomorrow today. Uh, we could create and change before, but it was in a frame and, the, and, and now there's no frame anymore because there's so much uncertainty on the future are unknown and actually it's unknown because we are creating it right now and i don't think we had before such an opportunity to create at least in this generation and to transform the world so we can really co-create together you know how it is everybody has a gift and that's because we 
put our gifts together that we can create something greater for the world. And so my advice or my thought would be, what can you do right now with who you are right now and where you are from versus looking at the big pictures and what's not there and this and that, just like, okay, I'm here right now. This is what I know. What can I do here and now about that? What can I, what can I create right now? And don't look at uh, in one month from now or, or in a year. It's pointless. Just look at, okay, what can I do today? What, what can I do? And that's it. And the fear, the fear is here. It's part of uh, us being human. It's, uh, it's how we survived uh, through uh, thousands of years, <laughs> thanks to fear. So, okay, there's fear. And, and about fear, it's not about erasing it and saying, oh, it doesn't exist. It's about redirecting it. Okay, I'm afraid of that. How can I use it? How can I use this stress differently? Let's just not, you know, put things down, but just pivot and transform. I think it's about transformation versus shutting things down and avoiding. It's just taking your turn. That's, that's it. Oh, transformation. Yes. And pivoting the words for this year. Right. And yeah. <laughs> coming up with that resilience and that flexibility and uh, new eyes to see different opportunities and um, different experiences. I mean, I wouldn't be sitting here with you had this year not been the way that it is because I had never really done a lot of these challenges. Yeah. So, uh, me neither. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, finding the silver lining and focusing on the positive. And um, thank you so much, Anna. It has been the most amazing pleasure talking to you. I cannot wait until you come to Sacramento <laughs> and visit and stay with me. It's going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, just have, uh, you know, a blessed time i know you're in transition and doing some different things but um i'm here for you and i just thank you so much for your time and such valuable insight and information thank you so much bye, <laughs> bye. <laughs> thank you